Good morning. Welcome to chapel today. Uh, today we celebrate the festival of the martyrdom of John the Baptist, and we also welcome Pastor Louis Polzine of St. Peter Emanuel Lutheran Church here in Milwaukee as our guest preacher today. We're thankful for his presence and sharing the word of God and a message from it with us. Immediately after chapel today, everyone is invited to proceed to the cafeteria for, or the calf for uh, dedication of the newly renovated uh, Siebert Dining Hall. So please join us for that immediately after the service. The order of worship today is responsive prayer two. It's on page 285. Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah. And others said, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, don't lose your head. That's how I always heard it. Don't lose your head. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Don't rock the boat. Don't get in trouble. Don't make trouble. Don't get people upset. Don't lose your head. Great advice if you're sitting in class and your professor says something that you don't agree with. Great advice if that one person who always has that one thing that they've got to say says that one thing that just finally gets you over that edge and gets on your nerves. Great advice when your department chair changes that policy that you really don't think should have been changed. 
Great advice when your direct supervisor drops the ball again and you just wish that he would know how much it inconveniences you? Really awful advice if you're confronted with reality and it's conflict with the Word of God. That's when you should lose your head for God. And that's the situation that John the baptizer found himself in. He spoke the word of God when he needed to, and he ended up in hot water because of it. He would lose his head, not in unrighteous anger, but for another's sin. The historian Josephus tells us that Herodias divorced her husband and likely because her husband, whose name was Herod Philip, was taken out of the line of power because of a plot to kill the king, Herod the Great, and she loved power. She lost her head. Power and marriage don't mix, and they always lead to sin. And the scriptures tell us that her husband's brother, Herod the Tetrarch, took her as his own wife. This wasn't just a faux pas, this was scandalous sin and public to boot. So John the baptizer spoke out against their adulterous, incestuous relationship with the word of God. He spoke the truth and Herodias, I know there's a lot of Herod names back then, she wanted to kill him probably for the embarrassment of it all and she lost her head. Murder and anger don't mix and always lead to sin. But Herod, her kind of brother, cousin, lover, husband, liked John. So he put him in prison so he could still hear John and at least no one, including his wife, could kill John there. Herodias wasn't happy with that. She lost her head. She began to plot against John and her husband. Deceit and marriage don't mix and always lead to sin. And then comes the dance. Salome, the daughter of Herodias and Herod's brother, danced. Not a nice ballet. Not a five-year-old's, Daddy, watch my show. This was a dance that got every man in the room, including Herod, watching her. So much so that Herod lost his head and unwisely offered her a reward up to whatever, up to half of his kingdom, whatever she wanted, because lust and beauty don't mix and always lead to sin. Salome went to her mother, who had arranged the entire thing and asked what she should ask for. The head of John the baptizer, she said, on a platter. And Herod was sad, but John the baptizer finally lost his head. John was the prophet of God, preaching the word in all of its truth, that the Herod family might repent and find the forgiveness of sins. And all they found were more sin and condemnation. All they found were lies and betrayal and adultery and death. You can imagine Herodias, a woman who put the evil of Jezebel to shame, putting the head of John in the corner of her bedroom so that every night she could stare at him and laugh at her victory over him and his accusations, thinking that death had finally shut the man up. But every night the unblinking eyes of John the baptizer would stare at her as she would lay with Herod in her sin. And every day the unblinking eyes would remind her that she had set this man into the grave. And every season of every year the unblinking eyes of John reminded her of how evil she was. The head of John was still screaming the accusations of the word of God because death can't stop the word. Even if no one's listening. And she wasn't. She didn't notice. But you've noticed, haven't you? Haven't you noticed the unblinking eyes and the voice of the word of God accusing you? Haven't you noticed the all-seeing God noticing you and your sin, pricking your conscience, 
pointing out your faults, reminding you that death is waiting to take you at any moment because you should. You should remember that your God sees what you've done and how many times you've lost your head and he sends his word and his messengers to remind you that you've fallen from grace. And death, like as for John, comes for you when it wishes, even at the hands of evil men. And you lose your head. You can lose it when God takes his recompense on the evil and the unrepentant and throws the, the ungodly into hell to die for eternity. Or you can lose your head like Herodias and just rail against God and his truth in this life and you can fight and you can scream and make bad decision after bad decision. Or you can lose your head, bowing down before your God, bearing your neck for him to do what he wishes to do with you, whether to kill you or to have mercy, because you deserve no mercy at all, do you? And you know it. You know in that moment you can lose your head. And all of a sudden, you find out that you haven't lost your head at all. Instead, the Lord lifts up your head and makes you look at him into his unblinking eyes. Those eyes that are so full of care. Those eyes that show you that he's missed nothing of what you've done. And yet he cares for you. And as he looks upon you, there is only mercy for all he sees is now you covered in his righteousness and you can't break his gaze. You want to fall at his feet, but he holds you up with his mercy. He gives you comfort with his grace. He feeds you and gives you drink with his flesh and his blood so that you would have his forgiveness. He sets you on your feet and he restores all things to you in a resurrected body as John's body will be resurrected, head and all. And you would know that there really is no head to be lost. There's no anger to be had. He's done all things, won all things, forgiven all things, made right all things. You are in Christ. And he'll make you well. Christ did not lose his head. And he didn't lose his life. He gave it up upon the cross. And this wasn't out of a sudden reaction of his. It wasn't out of anger. It wasn't out of hot-headedness. And it certainly wasn't because Jesus was some kind of troublemaker. It was because that's what he came to do for you. He gave up his life so that you would have life. He gave it up to have mercy on you so that when you lose your head, he gives it back to you. Don't lose your head. Don't sin in your anger. But when you do, return to Christ and his promises. He loves you. And he is here in the church and he stands ready, according to his word, to restore your head and your life in his mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join together with singing our hymn, which you can find on your handout.
We stand and continue with the Kyrie on page 285. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because your steadfast love is better than life. For you have been my help. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your servant John the Baptist to be the forerunner of your son, Jesus Christ, in both his preaching of repentance and his innocent death. Grant that we who have died and risen with Christ in holy baptism may daily repent of our sins, patiently suffer for the sake of the truth, and fearlessly bear witness to his victory over death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon those who call to you for help. For the Lund family, grieving the death of her nephew. For the friends of Jenny Thorpe, upon news of more aggressive cancer returning. And for Kevin and Karen, friends of Mary Jandre, who are traveling great distances to care for extended family members with serious health concerns, we pray. Have mercy upon all of them. Heal the sick, protect those who travel, grant strength and wisdom to those who provide care, and comfort mourners with the hope of the resurrection to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And we pray the morning prayer together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.